please welcome William Rickert, Chair, Teachers College Board of Trustees. As Chair of the Teachers College Board of Trustees, I have the honor of officially opening today's doctoral hooding ceremony and being the first to congratulate the 2019 doctoral graduates of Teachers College. The diplomas you will receive today are not just rewards for the courses, research, and dissertations you have completed. They're also proof that you have collaborated with some of the best minds in your field in the creation and discovery of new knowledge, that you have developed new ways of understanding complex challenges and phenomena, and that you have what it takes to become outstanding scholars, leaders, and change makers. TC graduates are dedicated to increasing well-being both in and out of schools and classrooms and across the lifespan. That's why so many of you will change lives as scholars and researchers, principals, superintendents, district leaders, psychologists, counselors, physiotherapists, artists, arts administrators, college presidents, nonprofit executives, and so much more. For more than 130 years, TC scholars have discovered new ways to understand the complex forces that shape our minds, our bodies, our relationships with, with each other and the world around us. Their foresight led to the creation of many fields such as education psychology, conflict resolution, international and comparative education, social studies education, special education, nutrition education, organizational psychology, and many more that you will now advance in your own distinct ways. Today, all of our programs in education, health, psychology, and leadership share a single aim, to help individuals and communities reach their full potential and flourish. And now it is my very great pleasure to introduce the president of Teachers College, Tom Bailey. <laughs> Good afternoon. Want to try that again? Good afternoon. All right. So welcome to this wonderful occasion as we celebrate the accomplishments of our graduates. So let's hear it from the Teachers College class of 2019. I guess I'm glad you're more enthusiastic about the class than the afternoon. So that was good. Uh, so, of course, graduates, you're the stars of our show, but we have a large supporting cast uh, to thank as well. Uh, as one, as in the words of a TSA alumna whom we recently honored, it takes a village to produce a dissertation. So let's hear it for those in the village who helped you. First of all, thank our, your, our faculty who helped you along the way and who always have your interests at heart. So let's thank them. We need to thank our staff who helped you, who always uh, have with, with skill, caring, and devotion. Also, I want to thank the uh, volunteers and staff who put together this wonder, con wonderful con convocation. So let's hear it for them as well. And finally, most important, your family, spouses, partners, whose countless acts of generosity, kindness, and infinite patience were indispensable to your success. So let's thank them. Thank you. So nearly a century ago, the great trial lawyer, Clarence Darrow, said that lost causes are the only causes worth fighting for. Now that might seem a bit quixotic. Darrow, after all, lost his most famous case, defending a high school teacher in the so-called so Scopes monkey trial. But while the other side won the battle in court, it lost the war. The trial proved a watershed moment 
that led to the widespread acceptance of the teaching of evolution despite continued closed-minded opposition. Perhaps what Darrow really meant was when very important causes hang in the balance, we must fight all the harder for them because the stakes are so high. Or as the editor of the magazine The Nation recently said, there are no lost causes, only causes waiting to be won. What are those more, most important causes waiting to be won today? What is the role of Teachers College in that fight? And what role will you play as you prepare for the next stages of your lives? Let's start with the issue that, confounds, that confronts every single person on the planet, and for which, as many others have noted, there simply is no plan B. I'm talking about climate change, climate change denial, and the resulting fundamental disruptions of the world's environment, geography, population movements, and social structure that this will cause. In the last decades, the majority of respected experts have concluded that the increasing levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, the rise in temperatures, the melting of the polar ice caps, and the climb in sea levels have dramatically accelerated. In short, we have already passed key tipping points. The next decade will be a make or break for all of us. We must literally find a way to stem the tide. All of our programs and activities at Teachers College in education, health, and psychology have a role to play in responding to the potential and reality of climate change. But as educators, practitioners, and above all, scholarly researchers, shouldn't we also think about climate change even more broadly as a metaphor creating, for creating a healthier climate for achieving progress on a whole range of issues and challenges? Challenges ranging from stereotypes and biases that warp perception of reality infect public discourse to the persistence of racism, anti-Semitism, sexism, and discrimination, which poses an existential threat to our civilization as lethal as climate change is to our planet, and to growing inequality, frustration, and thwarted goals throughout the world, as well as in our own country. What if, what if we created a climate where facts matter, where diversity of culture, experience, and thought is valued rather than feared, where freedom to think and speak freely does not become a license to insult, demean, or demonize those with whom we disagree. What if we turned our diversity into fertile ground for developing solutions that are broad enough to work on a mass scale, yet flexible enough to be adapted to different contexts. What will happen if we rallied our better angels and learned to work together for the common purpose and the greater good? The history of the civil rights movement and struggle, which ended legal se segregation and outlawed racial discrimination in housing, voting, and employment, furnishes us with important answers and examples. Those who were part of the movement did not solve every problem or get everything right. Neither will we. They made mistakes and often failed to follow through on their promises. So will we. There is still much work to do to accomplish the goals of the civil rights movement, and we will always have more work for us to do to achieve our goals. But the civil rights movement got many things right, and so could we. We could make major gains and progress towards becoming a better, more productive, and more just society. So the question for us today is this. How can we make the climate better for everyone? The civil rights movement required building awareness, knowledge, and understanding, and for confronting racism and structural barriers to progress and equity. And likewise today, we must dedicate ourselves about the true nature and scope of the problems we face, 
instead of turning away in fear or denying that the problems exist at all. We must educate ourselves about which solutions really work, as demonstrated by rigorous testing in the lab and in the real world, rather than privileging ideas that we merely want to work or think should work. And as educators, we must work to make our climate inhospitable to racism, anti-Semitism, and all forms of discrimination. At the most There's some good influences all the way in the back there. So. At the most basic level, we must educate ourselves about one another. Ultimately, as I have said, we need each other's perspectives and ideas. But to create such an exchange, we must first stop fearing and distrusting one another, and then try to understand what the world looks and feels like from each other's vantage points. What do the human beings across from us lack, or fear, or aspire to? What matters most to them? Now, I've raised these questions to each of our convocation ceremonies this week, but you have a special role to play. You're embarking on careers and lives as researchers at a moment when scholarship and science are under attack, when the value of higher education is being called into question, and when theories or ideas that have no basis in reality or science demand and often received an unquestioned hearing. You have the greatest opportunity and, by virtue of your TC doctoral education, the tools to change the climate of our times. TC doctoral graduate Lisa Edstrom has done just this kind of work. Dr. Edstrom's dissertation, completed in 2018, was titled, Taking Action, Afri African American Mother Activists Working for Change in City Schools. Her starting point was the observation that in school reform efforts led by parents, white parents tend to take the most visible lead roles, often heading committees and leading demonstrations. But Dr. Edstrom introduced different definitions of terms such as activism, leaders, and change agent. Applying the black feminist framework of Patricia Hill Collins, Bell Hooks, and others, she argued that black mothers often bring about an equally valuable change through mothering itself. She also, also emphasized the other mothering that many black women provide to the children or friends and relatives, reflecting their belief that children are community responsibility. That such work sometimes avoids direct confrontation with oppressive structures reflects black women's historical concern for group survival. Or as Dr. Edstrom put it, as mothers, our goal is to achieve the goal of raising healthy, successful children. Ultimately, Dr. Edstrom argues that the oppression experienced by African-American mothers defines and strengthens their efforts. The result is a broader, richer conception of parental involvement with schools. I am very proud to say that in April, at our academic festival, we presented Dr. Edstrom with an award named for another remarkable Teachers College alumna, our Shirley Chisholm Dissertation Award. Shirley Chisholm is best remembered as the first African-American Congresswoman and the first to seek the presidential nomination of a major political party. But she started out as a school teacher. And during her seven terms in Congress, she helped expand the nation's food stamp program and create the, the special supplemental nutrition program for women, infants, and children. Among her many memorable sayings is one I particularly enjoy. If, you don't, if, you, if, if they don't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. But it's not just our... That was, I'm glad we're spreading. That one started up here closer, so that was good. But it's not our, just our alumni who are making a difference. M many of you who are graduating here today have your own powerful stories to, step, to tell. The work of Barry Goldenberg. Now, Barry is here, I believe. <laughs> who is receiving his PhD today in history and education 
offers an instructive example of intellectual climate change at the community level. Barry grew up in a mostly white St. Louis suburb, but as an undergraduate at UCLA, he studied with Ernest Morell, an African-American prof American professor who opened his eyes to racial inequities in urban public schools. Barry and Dr. Morell eventually reunited at Teachers College, where Dr. Morell led our Institute for Urban and Minority Education for several years. Under Dr. Morell's direction, Barry founded and led an after-school program called Youth Historians in Harlem, which teaches young people about the rich history of their own community. Information often excluded from the typical US history curriculum. Barry has taught teens about the 20th century urban policy, black and Latinx communities, and gentrification. He has introduced these, these young people to books and archival material and helped them develop their own research skills. Over time, he says, they appreciate that Harlem is really an amazing place. And these are their stories and their history. They also become invested in preserving that heritage. Understanding what the, what the community has been gives them a greater understanding of what is happening in the community now. Barry says, quote, it helps them understand why their elders are upset when a Whole Foods pops up. Today, Youth Historians is still going strong, and Barry is seeking a permanent position in higher education while he teaches at a community college in Los Angeles. Barry, cite us as a reference. There isn't a college in the nation that wouldn't be lucky to have you. So doctoral colleagues, all of you carry within you the power of research to change our thinking at the most basic level. Through the promulgation of ideas that are deeply rooted in evidence, we can indeed channel Shirley Chisholm and pull up folding chairs at the table where our society sets its course. This is the power and the trust that Teachers College now places in your hands. Wherever your paths take you, all of you will play a vital and decisive role in educating young and future generations to flourish in mind, in body, and in civic spirit. You will teach them to become well-informed citizens who can treat the environment with care and one another with respect. You will teach them to distinguish truth from lies and real facts from alternative facts. You will encourage them to think for themselves, and you will inspire them to embrace justice. And by teaching them well, you will go a long way towards removing carbon from the air, hate from our discourse, and racism and anti-Semitism from our society. Sadly, Sadly, you will encounter many people, let's call them education deniers, who will not appreciate your gifts or value your work. They may mock you as social justice warriors. But remember, reversing climate change literally and figuratively is not a lost cause. Even convincing climate and education deniers to change their thinking is not a lost cause. These are all causes just waiting to be won. We look to you, members of the Teachers College class of 2019, to lead to the way to these victories. Thank you and congratulations. Okay, we now have reached the moment in this ceremony when we honor an extraordinary individual whose life work has advanced the cause of education while upholding TC's core mission to foster excellence and equity in the fields we serve. Among those honored in past ceremonies were Archbishop Desmond Tutu, Coretta Scott King, Senator George Mitchell, Pete Seeger, Eric Holder, Thomas Friedman, Neil deGrasse Tyson, Gail Collins, Spike Lee, Linda Darling-Hammond, Jelani Cobb, Temple Grandin, 
and the Reverend Dr. Martin O. Butts. This year, we honor four preeminent scholars and practitioners, Michelle Fine, Rosie Phillips Davis, Sabita Brown, and Barbara Morgan. I'm pleased to welcome TC Professor Oren Pismoni Levy, joined by Professor Thomas James, to introduce Barbara Morgan. Thank you. Good afternoon. Wow, the view from here is amazing, and I can't wait taking a picture with everybody after. Congratulations for the graduates. It's my pleasure to invite our medalist, Barbara Morgan, to join us at the podium. Okay. Barbara Morgan, Earthrise and the Blue Marble are two famous photographs taken by American astronauts as part of the Apollo program. More than anything, they show how beautiful, unique, and fragile is our planet. Indeed, these images contributed to the emergence of environmentalism worldwide, and they inspire educators to help students develop a sense of appreciation and responsibility. Speaking from the International Space Station in 2007, you called teaching the most important job on the planet and maybe beyond. You could have voiced those same ideas with equal authority based on your earlier work in classrooms in Montana's Flathead Indian Reservation, in Quito, Ecuador, and of course in your longtime hometown of McCall, Idaho. But coming from someone who has flown 5.3 million miles and spent 305 hours in space, those words stand as a clarion call to a nation that seems to increasingly disrespect the noblest profession and question the value of public education. You were rightly applauded for your courage in venturing into space after the death of your friend, Carista McAuliffe, and for your perseverance in waiting more than two decades to do so. You stayed the course because you wanted both to show the world that teachers have the right stuff and to inspire young people to become teachers themselves. Indeed, when you answered questions from 254 miles above Earth, demonstrating how, in gravity-free environment, to drink through a straw and to bench press two of your colleagues, you were simply re-enacting what you had done throughout your career, using the power of hands-on teaching to recall all children, to reach all children. In your subsequent role at Boise State University, you have inspired teachers mentored students and championed STEM educational programs that, quote, enable students to work side by side with experts and professionals. And you have encouraged young people themselves to dream of being astronauts or engineers, computer or environmental scientists, and yes, even and especially STEM teachers. Indeed, the moment you consider your proudest was not your lift off from Earth, nor the public acclaim that greeted you on, upon your return. Rather, it was your visit to the Barbara Morgan Elementary School in McCall, where you were hailed as a teacher above all. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to introduce our speaker, Barbara Morgan. Barbara Morgan for embodying the inquiry-based philosophy of education 
espoused by our own John Dewey, for your courage and determination in following that inquiry into the far reaches of space, and for being quite literally a teacher which we could look up to. We proudly present you with the Teachers College Medal for Distinguished Service. <laughs> Thank you so much. Greetings, Earthlings. <laughs> and congratulations, everyone, doctoral candidates, faculty and staff, President Bailey, trustees, parents, faculty, family, and friends. Everyone, congratulations. And thank you so much for this tremendous honor I am over the moon to receive this recognition from Teachers College because, and I am not exaggerating when I say that Teachers College is the best of the best. <laughs> Thank you for who you are and what you do. And just being with you here today is the greatest honor of all. Our teacher in space, Krista McAuliffe, had a saying, I touch the future, I teach. Doctoral candidates, you will guide the future. It will be hard, but hard is what makes it worth it. What a great difference you will make in our world. So this is a great day of celebration, a day for reflection and new perspectives, a looking forward and a looking back. We all have memories of big changes in our perspectives, changes to the stories of our lives. Today is a really big one, and you will have many more. I remember when President Reagan announced the Teacher in Space program back in 1985. I was watching the evening news on a little black and white TV in a little cabin up in the mountains of Idaho where I was teaching second grade. I thought, Wow, what a great thing. The Teacher in Space program was meant to open up space travel for ordinary citizens. It was also meant to pique students' interests in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Most of all, it was intended to change the country's perspective on what it means to be a teacher. This was at a time when teachers, and especially public school teachers, were held in very low regard nationally. The study titled A Nation at Risk had announced that America's schools were failing. But when Krista and I traveled to the NASA Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas to train with the crew of the Space Shuttle Challenger, we knew we were representing terrific teachers because we worked with them every day. Still, the press and the perceptions really hurt until we got to the NASA Johnson Space Center where we found a very pleasant surprise. There, every day, NASA workers kept coming up to us. They wanted to tell us about their favorite teachers, who were their friends and their mentors, who believed in them and who had changed their lives. They reinforced our professional perspectives so Krista and I trained every day with confidence and the pride of being public school teachers. Not all our changes are happy ones. Even so, those changes can help us to see more clearly and to grow and take the longer view. I remember a beautiful and clear but bitter cold January morning when the Space Shuttle Challenger launched toward space. We were expecting to hear about new perspectives from Krista, our teacher in space, as she shared her experiences with us back here on Earth. Instead, we witnessed a horrible tragedy. 
The Challenger accident stunned us all. We had lost the shuttle and we had lost our dear crew. It forced many of us to reconsider everything. Children all across the country and beyond were watching. I realized that we needed to show our children what adults need to do when terrible things happen. First, we must make sure that what we are doing is worth it. And then if it is worth it, we find out what went wrong, and even more importantly, what we did wrong. Then we fix it, we make it better, and we keep the future open. Doctoral candidates, that's what you are all going to be doing, keeping the future open. Well, after Challenger, I returned to teaching in Idaho to the bright-eyed perspectives of young children. And one gorgeous fall day, I was walking with our second grade students through a forest next to a lake. Our objective, observation, to be scientists and to use all of our senses to explore our world. And so our young students were out there studying the trees and sniffing the vanilla scent of ponderosa pine bark when suddenly, out on the glassy, calm lake, a flock of geese all started to take off. Their feet and their wingtips slapped the water, their honking filled the air, it was a huge ruckus, and I watched our young scientists, what would they see? It's dogs, one little girl shouted. It's dogs, and they're barking, and they're running on the water. And magically, for a split second, that is what all of us saw the geese became dogs. And then, just as incredibly, the dogs became geese again, and they all flew away. We all stood there blinking, and we were, very, we were laughing. We were learning that we often see what we want to see, or what someone else tells us we are seeing. In Idaho, I continued to learn with my students until one day NASA invited me to join the, its new class of rookie astronauts. Astronaut training gave me a whole new set of eyes, new ways of looking and learning, new ways of looking at learning, and something that pilots call situational awareness. That means knowing what's in front of you, what's behind you, what's above you, what's below you, what's all around you, even at supersonic speeds. One day in the beginning weeks of our astronaut candidate training, I happened to step into an elevator filled with some astronauts from the previous rookie class. Hey Barbara, how's it going? How do you like it? They said. And then they asked, added, it's a lot harder than teaching, isn't it? Yeah, right. <laughs> I gave them my answer. <laughs> I also knew they'd never been teachers and they weren't married to teachers. <laughs> But yes, being an astronaut is indeed hard, but it is not harder than what all of you are going out into the world to do. And your work is every bit as important. And it will require situational awareness. For example, a teacher needs to be situationally aware of every student in his or her class in order to design and provide the very best learning environment where all can reach their full potentials. And each of you, in whatever field of education writ large you work in, you will use your own awareness and your colleagues' perspectives and others' perspectives to gauge the situation and do the right thing. Years later, I launched into space with my crewmates on the Space Shuttle Endeavor to help construct the International Space Station. The engines roared, and I mean roared, our spacecraft shook, and I mean shook. The space shuttle's power is so immense that it felt like it could push right through me into space. And eight and a half minutes later, we reached orbit and we were weightless. Being weightless, it's like flying in your dreams. It feels unworldly, and it's a little hard to get used to at first. But once you are used to it, you realize that spaceflight is a very natural thing for human beings to do. How can that be? What in evolution could have prepared us for that? Well, I think it's our highly evolved sense of curiosity, our need to explore. Curiosity, I'm sure, did not kill the cat. 
Curiosity gave the cat its nine lives. Curiosity, exploration, discovery will help us thrive through education and your work. Orbiting the Earth at 17,500 miles an hour is a rush. At that speed, that's five miles per second, you orbit the Earth every hour and a half, and you get a sunrise and a sunset every 45 minutes. When you're on the daytime side of the planet, you see that the blackness of space, and it is pitch black, goes all the way down to the edge of our Earth. Our atmosphere is this thin, and I don't know if you can see my fingers, but it's about a quarter of an inch, eighth to a quarter of an inch. It's like the skin of an apple. And from that perspective, you get a very deep understanding that we are all in this together. We need everything Teachers College is doing. Well, I have one more little story for you today. This one also reminds me of you. It was during one of our orbits when we were flying over Africa as we were getting closer to the nighttime side of the Earth. We could see way off in the distance, way out in front of us over the Indian Ocean, dozens of isolated thunderstorms stretching hundreds of miles and many miles apart. Minutes later, we crossed the east coast of Africa, and it was already nighttime. Below us, city lights outlined the entire East African coast. And then, seconds later, we were over the Indian Ocean. It was pitch black until one of those thunderheads let loose a bright flash of lightning. And that flash triggered another thundercloud's lightning bolt miles away. And that thundercloud lit up, and it triggered a bright bright flash in another thundercloud, and another, and another, and another. It was flash, 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 pop, pop, pop. So perspective. It was so obvious that all of those thunderstorms were connected. And now I laugh every time I hear the TV weather reporter talk about isolated thunderstorms. I am sure there is no such thing. Those natural fireworks are all connected just as we here are all connected. And you, doctoral students, you are like those brilliant flashes. Your work, your energy, your bright ideas, your collaborations, I can't wait. We sailed on until we fired our braking engines and slipped out of orbit. And all the while, during deorbit and deceleration, gravity slowly took hold of us again. We landed at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, and over our radios, we heard our Capcom from Mission Control say, welcome home, Endeavor. You have given a whole new meaning to higher education. Our wheels stopped, our shuttle hissed and creaked, and we all felt a tremendous sense of pride in our countries. But I also felt on my shoulders and in my heart an enormous weight of gratitude for all the years and all the dreams of all the people and all the teachers who had taught me and all the educators who helped me. It was a day that felt very much like I feel here today. I am grateful for all of you and for all the young people and all the communities that are going to benefit from your great work. For them, the sky will be no limit. Congratulations, doctoral candidates. You have earned this day, and our beautiful world deserves you. Thank you. in coordination with Every Voice Choirs, which is a children's choir housed at Teachers College under the direction of Dr. 
Nicole Becker. Who will stand and chase away the darkness? Bridge the river that divides humanity. Lead us toward the light of justice as we seek the promised land. Who will lead us? Maybe you can lead the way. Find the light. There's a place for you and me. The things that make us different are the things that make me me. If we were all the same, how boring planet Earth would be. So let's celebrate our differences and our diversity. Let's listen to other and stand in solidarity. Lead the way. Find the light. Hear the voices showing you the way. Tomorrow is for you. From adversity and strife To parents, teachers, authors, friends Who've helped to pave the way You've taught me what a leader is So I can stand and say Sisters, daughters, fathers, mothers, we can learn to share and learn to care. Bridges the river. We will listen to their questions and we will try to understand. 
We will follow you and lead you hand in hand, hand in hand, hand in hand. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Drew Coles, EDD candidate of the Music and Music Education Department of Arts and Humanities, accompanied by the Drew Coles Ensemble. And now, the hooding of our graduates by Provost Thomas James. Good afternoon, faculty and staff in the Department of Arts and Humanities warmly congratulates our 31 doctoral graduates from seven of our 10 academic programs, art and art education, English education, applied linguistics and TESOL, history and education, philosophy and education, music and music education, and teaching of social studies. We celebrate our graduates' extraordinary accomplishments. We thank them for their hard work and perseverance, and we wish them the best of the best as they head out to the real world to take on societal and educational challenges. Now, before I read our graduates' names, and before we see them walk across the stage to be hooted by the president, let me ask the students' dissertation advisors in a and to please stand up and be recognized. Please. Department Chair Zhao Hong Han for the Department of Arts and Humanities. We thank our faculty for their hard work and perseverance. Christina Viario. Okay, Ming Ming Kyung Choi. Jennifer Eckers. Jennifer McLaughlin Cahill. Robert Aston. Jeffrey Cobran. Natalie Alarcon. Angela Almond. Jin Yong Ko. Jacqueline Greiner. Barry Goldenberg. Viola Huang. Jessica Davis. Nicholas Tenchuk. Chen Ling Chen. Ga 
Hey Song. Mi Sang Park. Heidi Liu Banerjee. Kimberly Stevenson. Felix Graham. Adriana Diaz Donazo. Megan Dissinger. Derek Thompson. Young Chen Katie Ho Weatherly. Drew Xavier Coles. Beth Samaya. Rachel Goland. Kelly Keen. Ayong Song. So he Koo. Ju Yong Yu. Fancy shoes. <laughs> Congratulations again to all of them. Department Chair Carol Ewing Garber for the Department of Biobehavioral Sciences. On behalf of the faculty and staff of the Department of Biobehavioral Sciences, let me extend our heartfelt congratulations to our graduates and their families on your incredible accomplishments. Our students are brilliant, bold, and spirited. The Department of Biobehavioral Sciences offers programs in communication sciences and disorders, physical education, movement sciences, kinesiology, and neurosciences. Our research focuses on the application of the biological, physiological, behavioral, cognitive, and sociocultural sciences underlying human communication, movement, and function to clinical, educational, and community settings. Our doctoral graduates will go on to assume challenging research, academic, and professional roles in educational, clinical, governmental, and non-governmental settings. Now I'm proud to introduce to you the 2019 doctoral graduates of the Department of Biobehavioral Sciences. Ray Frederick. I 
Andrea Duran. Ari Lau. Leanne Brambo. Akila Rajapa. Nick Santa Barbara. Mark Louie. Mark is accompanied by his mother, Danelia Rosa, director of TC's Dean Hope Center of Educational and Psychological Services and adjunct full professor of the clinical psychology program. That concludes the doctoral graduates of the Department of Biobehavioral Sciences. Department Chair George Bonanno for the Department of Counseling and Clinical Psychology. Hello. On your program, on the inside, you will see the phrase Teachers College, Columbia University, a graduate school of education, health, and psychology. Psychology is a big part of TC, and we are a big part of psychology. The Department of Counseling and S Clinical Psychology is comprised of two outstanding doctoral programs, Counseling Psychology and Clinical Psychology. Both of these programs are top in their fields, they are rigorous, and they are demanding. Both programs use what is called a scientist-practitioner model. In a way, you could say that our doctoral students earn two PhDs. As developing practitioners, they must learn to think like scientists. And as developing scientists, they must learn to think as clinicians would think. They must think as a scientist would think about clinical problems and social problems. Entry into these programs is very, 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 very selective. To put it bluntly, the students we admit, the students who will be hooded today, are the cream of the crop. These students. These students have worked hard and they have done great things. They are incredibly talented, incredibly accomplished, published, innovating, and they're breaking new ground. And it is my honor today to read their names. Marielle Bouquet. Jesse Suzuki. Rashida White. Sinead Saint Barquette. Megan Reyna. Elizabeth Geiger. Michael Awad. <laughs> Joanna Minji Rooney. <laughs> Runjuna Srinas Srinivasan, sorry. <laughs> CJ Polaronicus. Corinne Calgay. Kimberly Hinman. Clayton McClintock. Adam Rossi. David Lynch. <laughs> Melanie Love. <laughs> 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 
Philippa Sophie Connolly. Catherine, Catherine Stolov. Lee Colvin. Lee, Lee is accompanied by her father, Jeff Colvin, Teachers College trustee who earned his undergraduate JD and MBA degrees from Columbia University. That concludes the Dr. Hooding for the Department of Counseling and Training. Professor Daniel Friedrich for the Department of Curriculum and Teaching. Good afternoon. This year's doctoral graduates from the Department of Curriculum and Teaching have done an impressive job at embodying the mission of the department to provide critical analysis of the ways in which curriculum, teaching, and schooling contribute to social inequalities and to counter that with a commitment to educating for social justice. The tremendous research produced by these scholars brings to light the complexities of educating in these difficult times, but most importantly, they give us the tools to imagine the world otherwise, and they invite us to build that world with them. On Monday's master's graduation ceremony, medalist Michelle Fine asked graduates, what will you plant in the soil of our deeply troubled nation? I can assure you all that we will have a strong crop growing from the wonderful seeds planted by these newly minted doctors. Please join me, the faculty and staff in curriculum and teaching in recognizing these graduates and their contributions to critically complicating our ideas of teaching, learning, and schooling. Heather Michael. Yung Ming Kwan. William Davis. Noah Hickenberg. Carmela Gustafsson. Duncan Wilson. Lindsay Mann. Sonia Cherry Paul. Eloise Cook. <laughs> Kelly DeLuca. This concludes the hooding of the doctoral uh, graduates from curriculum and teaching. Department Chair Aaron Pallas for the Department of Education Policy and Social Analysis. The Department of Education Policy and Social Analysis, or EPSA as we refer to it, is the newest of Teachers College's 10 departments. As President Tom Bailey, a longtime faculty member in the department, nears the conclusion of his first year in office, we joke that he serves the college via a no-interest loan from EPSA. The graduates and faculty of EPSA study how social, political, economic, and legal contexts influence the behavior of education systems from early childhood through post-secondary education. We look at where education policies come from and their consequences for the broadly shared goals of equity, efficiency, and community. On behalf of our faculty and staff, 
I'm thrilled to present the 2019 doctoral graduates of the Department of Education Policy and Social Analysis. Josefa Aguirre. Rena Park. Pavithra Nagarajan. Lauren Fox. Basil Smichael. Yushin Lin. Sidra Raymond. Eric Chan. Congratulations to our graduates. Department Chair Dolores Perrin for the Department of Health and Behavior Studies. Good afternoon. The Department of Health and Behavior Studies consists of clusters of programs in health, applied educational psychology, and special education. Our collective mission is to improve the health, learning, and social well-being of children and adults in schools and other settings. On behalf of our department, I want to present to you the wonderful people who have worked so hard to earn their doctorates and appear before you today. Before I begin, I want to thank you, the parents, partners, relatives, and other persons for the invaluable support you have provided to help our students accomplish so much. Congratulations, graduates. Andrew Dacopoulos. Laura Gentilini. Loretta Brady. Liana Mellon. Angela Chen. Sangyang Yoon. Brittany Bly. Sarah Cecila. Did I get it right? Teresa Gruyere. Joseph Tarantino. Catherine Durham. Michael Johnson. Michelle Silverman. Susanna Javed. Catherine White. Adele Lee. Maxine Ashby Thompson. Carrie Russo. Summer Butler. <clears throat> <laughs> 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 
Amrita Persaud. Wanimo Okoya. Adrienne Evans. Yaina Song. Jolene Lalas. Katerina DeVito. Carolyn Frost. Bakunmi Gesenda. Suzanne Tierhe. Jillian Rose. Joyce Gyamfi. Falakimi Iadone. Elsie Mecklenburg. Elsie Laria. Irma Hidiana. Alejan Canelo Villafana. Peter Afron. Tom Wishahar. Congratulations, graduates. That concludes the hooding of the graduates from the Department of Health and Behavior Studies. Department Chair James Corter for the Department of Human Development. The Department of Human Development is comprised of programs in cognitive science and education, developmental psychology, measurement, evaluation, and statistics, and learning analytics. Faculty and students in the department collaborate and research on the neural and mental processes underlying learning and development, creativity, collaboration, social emotional functioning, and instructional design. Other work develops new methodologies and technologies that improve testing and assessments, improve the generalization and use of research results, or that lead to new and better ways of analyzing and understanding data. The, the graduates now bring these skills and this knowledge into the broader world to continue their work and to apply it to improve society. Nirmalese Colon Acosta. Yu Chen Shi. Mariana Lamnina. Ji Yan An. Jing Zhao. Ran Chen. Xiang Liu. Zhuang Zhang Han. Sha Lang Zhou.
Shin Yu Ni. Hedia Amadi. Shi Min Kai. Melissa Zrada. This concludes the hooding of the candidates from the Department of Human Development. Associate Professor of Practice, Mary Mendenhall for the Department of International and Transcultural Studies. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the faculty in the International and Comparative Education and Anthropology programs, I am proud to present our new peers. They hail from around the world and captured this richness through their research across different country contexts. They moved our department's mission, first to understand that education is part of a larger global process, Second, to examine educational processes in their contexts and complexities. And third, to develop and analyze policies, practices, and pedagogies in dynamic and challenging environments, including South Africa, Nigeria, China, Ecuador, Mexico, and the United States. And so, I am proud to present our graduates. Vanya Salgado. Mirka Martel. Marlena Salmon Letelier. <laughs> Ji Lu. <laughs> Alexander Dvorak. <laughs> Milaka Yifani. Congratulations to our international and transcultural studies graduates. Professor Erica Walker for the Department of Mathematics, Science, and Technology. Good afternoon. I'm delighted to represent the Department of Mathematics, Science, and Technology faculty and staff and congratulating our wonderful graduates, our new doctoral colleagues. Our department has three programs, mathematics education, science education, and communication, media, and learning technologies design. Our faculty and students share rich scholarly perspectives, educational ideals, and a strong commitment to improving society through research, practice, and the enhancement of human potential. We are very proud of all of our graduates and look forward to all of the wonderful things that they will continue to do. Sandra Marcus. Aram Park. Anna Conover. Michelle Ferboni. Katherine Kaiser. <laughs> Young Jung Kim. So Sun Young Bang. Go ahead. 
Beatrice Levin. Elizabeth Wentworth. Patrick Galarza. Kimberly Barba. Lucretia Glover. Orita Johnson. Serene and Daye. Shing Chi Lu. Rachel Connolly. Brigida Cornet. Aram Choi. Bibi Khan. Lauren Mangione, accompanied by her mother, Dr. Ellen Mangione, MD from Columbia School of Medicine. Jessica Chen. <laughs> Gary Weiser. Shao Shin Liu. This concludes the hitting of the doctoral graduates of the Department of Mathematics, Science, and Technology. Congratulations to our graduates and their families and friends. Department Chair William Baldwin for the Department of Organization and Leadership. Good afternoon. Uh, graduates from the Department of Organization and Leadership have completed very rigorous programs of study working with faculty instructional staff across five very different distinct fields of study. What I'd like to do is to provide a little bit of context about the aspirations, uh, the connective tissue uh, that scaffolds that work. Um, first, our work seeks to link leadership and learning. We believe we lead best when we help others to learn and when we keep <clears throat> excuse me, our own continual learning at the center of how we lead. Our work seeks to link leadership and learning, and that work recognizes the value of organizations with diverse members. Members who will bring unique insights, questions, and interests to collective endeavor. Our work takes as a given that the organizations and communities we serve must promote the common good and consequentially, we conceive of leadership as an ethical imperative to act in ways that support our essential humanity. We engage in this work across a range of venues, schools, colleges, universities, hospitals, for-profit businesses, not-for-profit organizations and agencies, branches of the military, and governmental agencies. Across all of those venues, we strive to develop and support organizations that celebrate and believe in diversity, equity, and social justice. In recognition of those themes and their work, I'm honored on behalf of my colleagues to present the 2019 graduates of the Department of Organization and Leadership. Deborah Brooks Lawrence. Go ahead. 
Leslie Williams. Dahi Sean. Jennifer Kim. Danielle Pfaff. Ariel Finch Bernstein. K.E.O. Simara McPhee. Kerry Huber. Joyce Leslie Highhouse. Michelle Walker Davis. Fabian Fieri. Ernest Byers. <laughs> Monique Dawkins. Linda Gironda. Debbie Sutherland. Pamela Catherine Booth. Renee Owen. Anna Lee. Susan Helen Fountain. Maria Anderson Long. Jessica Ostro Michelle Michael. Chloe Wright Dawson. <laughs> Kenneth Graves. Paul White. Maya Hasty. Congratulations to all of our 2019 graduates. Please join us in celebrating the class of 2019. Please be seated. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Marion Boltby, President of the Teachers College Alumni Association. Alumni, let me say that again, alumni. It is my distinct pleasure to welcome you formally into the Teachers College Alumni Association. As you stand here before this esteemed group and alongside your peers, we look on with great pride. Today, you join our Alumni Association, a network of over 90,000 professionals comprised of graduates from a myriad of academic backgrounds and all walks of life who have created an incredible legacy. You will now become a part of that legacy. Your fellow Teachers College alumni have made a global impact, shaping many fields of inquiry and practice. They have done so through their leadership, tenacity, experience, and wisdom. They also have done so because of the people like the ones around you today, who form your support systems and network of peer mentors. Many would argue that they have done so because of their teacher's college preparation. We know that you too will follow in these footsteps and make your own mark. Just as you needed support during your time at TC, we know you will need similar resources as you embark on your careers. And we encourage you to look to Teachers College for that support. I'm here today to tell you how valuable your participation in our Alumni Association can be. We are colleagues and collaborators, supporters and challengers, mentors and mentees, and most importantly, we are your peers. What keeps us all together is our alma mater, Teachers College. While everyone has had a different journey, I am certain that no one's path leading to this time and place was free of challenges. I'm also certain that along the way you found inspiration, insight, and I hope joy. And many of you have developed what will become lifelong friendships. I encourage you strongly to stay connected to your classmates as you move forward in your careers and to tap the deep pool of expertise and knowledge offered by the broader TC community. We hope to see you at future alumni events as well as featured in future newsletters. Know that you will always have a home in TC's vibrant community. Now, on behalf of your fellow alumni, we wish you all the best in your endeavors. Congratulations, and welcome to the Teachers College Alumni Association. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Bill Rickert. On behalf of the trustees of Teachers College, I want to congratulate each of you on your extraordinary achievement. We thank your family and friends for joining with the faculty and staff of Teachers College to recognize you, our doctoral graduates of the class of 2019. We know that your contributions to improving the lives of your fellow human beings will become part of the TC legacy and make us all proud. We invite all of you for light refreshments in the Russell Courtyard back at Teachers College, and we ask that family and friends please remain in your seats until all of the graduates 
have departed. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you.